You're watching News Made Easy. I'm Anandio Chakravarti, and today I'm going to talk about India's obsession with infrastructure. As if spending on infrastructure, building infrastructure, is going to solve all our economic problems, and that is why there is a, as you know, a big infrastructure push in Budget 2022. And if I take out the double counting, the spending on BSNL. I can say conservatively about 1.2 lakh crore additional is going to be spent on building infrastructure. And what does that mean? Bridges, roads, um, airports, sprucing up power plants. These are all spending that is going to be done. And of course on other things as well. And what does that mean? That means that that spending is going to be, uh, that money is going to go to uh, buy raw materials and equipment so what is that that's coal there's cement there's steel there are equipment like cranes road rollers ca big uh, you know equipment carriers and things like that which are used for in construction projects so all of these will actually be bought and there'll be a demand for them and of course there'll be employment one of the most visible forms of employment is at construction sites you see people working engineers there are trucks and bulldozers and uh, you know cranes working on the sites and it's a very uh, active um, visibly active space when it comes to work and employment so it looks like a lot of employment is being generated and when there are jobs then there is consumption look at this happy family uh, they've got jobs and there may be salary hikes as well there's a white collar family so maybe it's an engineer or a manager who's got a salary hike and they look very happy because they're buying more things and that is being argued that because of infrastructure uh, spending not only is infrastructure being built it's creating jobs it's creating demand in the economy and solving the huge demand problem that we have but ultimately we have to see that whatever spending that's taking place how much of that money is going to go in wages because ultimately that income is what is going to be spent on consumption goods and consumer durables. That's what consumers spend, right? So if I take NHAI, National Highway Authority of India's breakup, weights, then raw materials of the total cost of building an, uh, an, a highway, uh, raw materials account for 65%, equipment accounts for 21%, and wages directly account for about 14%. Uh, now the extra spending this year, is about 66,000 crore raw materials out of that as I said 65% will be about 43,000 crore Ep equipment will be about approximately 13,900 odd crore and if you look at wages directly it's about 9,200 crore that could be 10,000 I'm just taking rough numbers here but let's stick to that number which NHAI puts out as its weight but of course this is direct employment as I said, since demand will increase for equipment and raw materials, let's take a raw material uh, like, uh, let's say cement, right? So cement, in cement companies, I've taken the big companies, on an average, the labor cost of total cost is 18%. So which means that if a cement company gets 100 rupees from a highway project, then 18 rupees out of that 100 rupees, will go to workers right so indirectly that wage is being created because money is being spent on raw materials similarly equipment so again i've taken the big equipment manufacturers something like lnt only eight percent of the total cost is on wages so if they are getting 100 rupees for selling equipment then eight rupees out of that will go to workers so let's add all of that up and here you can see direct wage cost as i said is directly 14% in companies which produce raw materials I'm taking the cement average of 18% of costs is wages and in equipment companies wages account for 8% so let's add that up so direct wage cost is about 9240 that could be more these are uh, don't go by the accuracy of these numbers these are just calculations based on average uh, percentages that I'm taking they could be uh, roughly odd but broadly they'll be correct raw material the wage component of the raw materials of uh, NHAI's additional expenditure is about 7700 and the equipment component wage component of equipment is about 1100 crores so all these numbers that you're seeing are crores when I add them up the total wage impact is 18,000 crore out of what out of the 66,000 crore. Uh, so 66,000 crore is the total additional spending by NHAI this year. 
total wage impact is 18,000 crore. So we can say that 27% of what NHAI spends is the total direct and indirect wage impact of what it spends, right? And that's the num figure that we'll take for all, uh, as a proxy for all infrastructure spending. Bear it out uh, right now. But remember that the highest wage ratio is actually in something like Manrega, where the wage ratio is 60%. So for every 100 rupees spent, 60 rupees has to be paid out in wages, which is why Manrega creates so, so, so much employment and puts so much money in the hands directly of people. Manrega has been cut this year, the allocation by 25,000 crore. And remember, if it has been cut by 25,000, again, remember these, 20, these numbers that you're seeing. I don't have space, that's why I've put it as 25,000, but it's actually 25,000 crore. And the wage cut is 15,000 crore. 60% of 25,000 means that if the allocation is reduced, in terms of wages, 15,000 crore is going to go away. And remember, here I'm just taking direct wages. I can do the same thing and say, if in Manrega equipment and raw materials have been supplied, and I can say, okay, about 15% of that is also going to be wages, but I'm not doing that. I'm taking a conservative estimate here. So let's look at it. The extra infrastructure spent, as I said, approximately 1.2 lakh crore. Extra wages at 27% of 1.2 lakh crore is roughly 33,000 crore. But remember, Manrega reduction is going to take out 15,000 crores of wages from the system. So the net wage impact is 33 minus 15, which is just 18,000 crore. That's the net wage impact of the total infrastructure spending that the government is doing. 18,000 crore is not bad. You can say it's not too bad, but let's look at the number of jobs. Last year, the government spent approximately 1 lakh crore and it created about 15 crore Manrega jobs. And this year, I can say approximately at that same rate, if it has been cut by 25,000 crore, uh, crore, then the number of jobs that are going away are about 3.8 crore jobs are going away. All right. So these 3.8 crore odd people are going to be looking for new work, which is being created by these infrastructure uh, spending, right? Along with that, there are in India about five and a half, six crore construction workers who will also be used for these projects. So effectively, you can say about six odd crore total, right? People moving from Manrega, some more demand, which was not met last year. So total number of people looking for jobs and might get work is let's say six crore. These are not new jobs, but these are jobs which already exist. They're just going to get additional wages by getting extra work. Remember, they don't get work throughout the year. So extra per head, Total is 18,000 crore, 6 crore workers getting that 18,000 crore. Extra per head, uh, per worker works out to just 3,000 rupees. Just 3,000 rupees for the entire year. Now, what does that mean? Workers, on an average, workers per household are about 1.3 people, right? And so the extra wages will work out to 3,000 into 1.3, which is 3,900 rupees for the family, for the household. Members on an average per household is about five and a half at the poor uh, amongst poor people who do this kind of work So extra wages per head per in the year is going to be about 710 rupees per person in that family What does that mean per person annually in the entire year 710 rupees per month less than 60 rupees? That is just two rupees per day additional to approximately I'll say approximately about 20 odd, 20, 25 odd crore people. That's the spending. That is where it's going. That is where the money is going to end up. Now, you can understand that what that means. That broadly means to us that this money is going to be used for just a little bit of extra expenditure on food, on absolute necessities. This is not going to generate any new demand at all. This is going to go towards basic necessities. It's not bad, it should happen, but there are other ways to deal with it, other ways to not only create jobs, but also to increase consumption. Very clearly, infrastructure spending does not help. Infrastructure spending actually only boosts profits because big companies get these contracts. These are guaranteed returns, guaranteed revenues. They add their profit margin at the tender and their profits get guaranteed. 
So that's what happens. Ultimately, this is going to fatten the purses of the rich. That's the show today. Keep watching News Click. Do subscribe to us, like this video and share it as well.